So what did Sandy think of your performance as Bosun? Oh my God, look at that. Amazing. Look how fast you did it. it looks so good. Sandy was like can big me up like every single time though. She had like a lot every, of respect for after you, Sandy. Every, I remember her telling me, yeah. After every charter, she'd like say stuff in the, like when we had the tip meeting, like pretty much I think every single time she'd be like, oh, Trav, you done really well, like every time, so. You sure you weren't given a one on the sly? Pretty sure that she's into the old same that thing we're into. Yeah, so. reckon. Yeah, pretty sure. Fair enough. Travis, when he was a uh, bosun, he, he didn't need to be taught. He knew, mm -hmm. because Travis has a lot of experience. He's worked on a lot of sailing yachts. He has more experience than Joel. Did you have any apprehension about Travis becoming bosun? Well, uh, we knew that Tra I mean, we knew Travis's experience, and we knew that he was, you know, on the boat. He was a hard worker, yeah. you know, outside of the drinking. He's a great worker. I mean, he was jo he was Joel last year. I knew Joel last year was a good worker, but off the boat, he's a train wreck. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> you know, I had no doubt that, you know, Travis would have knocked out of the park. It was good to see Travis um, take initiative. Put a little initiative, put a little more eff effort into it. Um, and, you know, different styles as well. You yeah. know, it was the last charter of the season. You know, like I said earlier, Joao, like, he wants things done now. Travis is like, all right, let's get, uh, let's get the water toys out, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, and it he works. just, because it of works. that relaxed, yeah, and because it was the last charter, yeah. you know, I think we were all just kind of like, all right, let's just do this thing. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, it, 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 the timing couldn't have been more perfect. Everyone, yeah. at that point, we're such good friends, it's not really, it's not like you're a superior. It's like, oh, there's Trav and my mate just trying to organize stuff because Joao was absolutely in bed, like. And so you were completely comfortable really in that role. Yeah, I mean, I've done, I've done that for like, it's not a it's not a hard role like it's a I've done it I've worked on boats for like ages. What did you see as the difference between their styles? It sounds like confidence was one of them. No, Joao has confidence. <laughs> He's very confident. Joao's kinder. He's a more kind human being. Travis in that era, he gets a chip on his shoulder. Joao doesn't. The great thing about Joao is you could treat him like shit and the next day he's like a puppy. He forgets it. Him and I are a lot alike in that area. I can reset like that, so can he. Because I witnessed that on the last season, Travis cannot. Here's the interesting part. Travis is from the sailing world and not to take away from that, um, but the sailing mentality isn't like the yachting mentality. Mm -hmm. Sailing is for the love of the ocean. Super yachts is for show. You know, a lot of people want to be on our boat because they want to show off. And you want to make sure that everything's a part of that. Sailing, truly the love for the water and drinking and smoking. Yeah. The reason I say this is because being an expert in your field is an automatic. You have to know how to talk to people, treat people, and reset with people. Joao has what it takes to be a captain. I'm not so sure about Travis. On the last charter, Joao gets sick. So what did they say? He just said, we'll have a virus and a fever. I'd be fine for it. No. Yes. Not, uh, I'll decide that. Okay. okay. I need him on deck, but I also can't allow him to infect my crew. So I need him to rest and I need to quarantine him. Sometimes people think it's a little bit cruel because on yachts, if someone gets sick, we do. We put them in a cabin Quarantine. on their own. They're like, oh, they don't get fresh air and rah, rah, rah. And it's like, well, no, because if the whole boat goes down, we can't charter and the owner loses hundreds of thousands of euros. So yeah, it is a bit mean to stick them in a cabin on their own and just throw them water and food, but it's still business, you know? I know that we live there and we sleep there and everything, but at the end of the day, a charter boat is a business. And you That's know, right. we're not there to f spiders, we're there to make money. Yeah, exactly. And so when he got sick, <clears throat> I, he was in the water because they sucked the line up. You reckon you can do it? There you go. When you hear of all the things that could happen to your crew, everyone gets cuts on their hands, especially deck crew. Then you're in a, a scenario where you're in possibly some raw sewage. We were in an anchorage, and I like to say that every boat, when you, even when you treat your sewage, you, you, you're supposed to go offshore, but hepatitis A is sewage-related hepatitis. So, and I didn't want him to infect the crew. Hepatitis A is contagious, so I didn't want us to have it. She was worried about uh, probably more me than, than anybody else because we're roommates, so 
you know, she didn't want me to get sick because then say we do, two I catch it. Down. Now you have yeah. two people down. So I slept in, in Jack and Aisha's room for a night or two. Which I wasn't so sure as whether he would be safe that side. You have like the two horniest people in the world, <laughs> you know, in one room. I thought I was going to be caught in the mix. And, but, you, uh, and, and you weren't getting any sleep. That's yeah, for sure. I was getting any sleep, that's for sure. But yeah, no, it was, uh, you know, I'd never seen Joelle like that. Joelle got sick as f gay. I mean, he got like the flu real bad and he was in bed with like seven and blankets on him and he was like, oh, shit, we had to put, yeah. remember we put towels and shit all on shit, him? Yeah, I remember going in seeing him. Yeah, I mean, he got sick and I like just... It was good for us to like come together as well, like even though we'd all been like, I'd been at Joao's throat, he'd been at mine, we'd all pissed each other off. Like when he was sick, we all sort of, you realise that you are actually like friends as well. To be fair, we weren't like waking up and going, ah, oh, you. Like that's not how it yeah. was at all. Some days I did feel like that though, I was like, this but then when he was sick, I did feel like, oh, do you know what? Actually, we are mates. Yeah, the dude, like, the dude was probably yeah, in bed. Yeah, yeah, he was. When he was anyone's on death's like door, that, you yeah, have you've got to look for after him. them, yeah. How about being Travis's uh, roommate? What was that like? Well, to be honest, I think it was way worse for Travis. He actually said something f***ing funny, and, and he said, um, I'm gonna miss you, Ben. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace you uh, with a raccoon. You're not gonna miss me even a little bit. I might get a raccoon and keep it in my room to remind me. <laughs> you, man. <laughs> never say never, brother. They're really messy and they're nocturnal. <laughs> Sharing a cabin with him was f***ing carnage, man. Like, yeah. cause he came in and he only had like, what, 10 days yeah. left. So he just left his everywhere and the mother slept about 30 minutes a night. He operates on zero sleep. Like, he'd sleep a couple hours a night and he'd just be f***ing around in the cabin doing I don't know what. I wasn't there to sleep, so it probably was a little bit frustrating. Um, yeah, I, I was a disaster. He kind of looks like a raccoon, you know? Like a bit like... <laughs> I don't know, like he doesn't sleep much, so he's always got like dark around his eyes. And... <laughs> but he doesn't smell. Oh no, skunk smells. Raccoon doesn't smell. I think Velociraptor is more mm -hmm. accurate, mm -hmm. but raccoon, I guess, yeah. Why Velociraptor? Because when he's doing his cooking, he's like, he literally like bends over it and he's like, <sighs> and I swear I hear him going, ah! Ah! And he's just like, ah! Oh, and he does, he does this weird, like, rocking yeah, thing. Yeah, and he's like, like... He takes the salt and he's like... Yeah, he, like, gets, like, in a trance. Yeah, yeah and yeah. you're like, whoa. Yeah. It's a tornado. Yeah. It's, it's the it's Ben amazing. tornado. He's amazing. Yeah. I feel that Hannah hasn't quite decided whether she's going to be a boss and actually see the big picture and manage it or she's gonna be in the trenches with the workers. It's 8.35, table's still not set. There's nothing inviting if someone wakes up. There's no like place for them to go sit and have a coffee. Like if I'm chartering this boat, I would wanna wake up and have a table set. Okay, sure. That, that's our difference. Like we are different when it comes to that level of service. And To me it was important that last night when the guests were awake, there was two people up on service. There's three deck people up. They've been on anchor They watch. weren't, yeah, but they, they weren't. They washed your dishes. That's yeah, yeah. not, no, Hannah. I'll do please. the table, it's fine. This is only gonna make me, like, no, 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 it's fine. accelerate my already upsetness. That's, I'm sorry about that. The problem is, is we need a boss. We need a big picture boss. I feel like she's great in the trenches and she's, she, she's great at the grunt work, but at the same time, we lose. That labor detracts her from thinking, where are we going with this? What's gonna happen? You know, a boss should not work as hard as the other employees, because he's making decisions or she's making decisions. They should be more rested. A boss should be better rested than everyone else. Because one day there's gonna be a decision and she's gonna have to make that decision. And it could be a very important decision. So if she's fatigued, it, it doesn't work. I know it sounds weird, but it's kind of the way it is in yachting. Do you remember the last charter guests? The one with the two parties? <laughs> yeah, they were 
so boring. Oh my god. Wait until next April, Randy, whenever all the commission W-2 guys like me have to file their taxes. <laughs> what was so boring about him? Oh, I think that they were just like very straight laced, like didn't have any banter, they barely laughed. You know like with people you kind of like get on a roll with conversation, and you're like and like just laughing off each other. You just couldn't do that with them. They were just very like, I went to an Ivy League school and I yeah. talk about smart things. It was just very like, yeah, just no personalities really. Did yeah. you try to crack them? Yeah, of course, like, because yeah. especially for me, like, it's my job as a service stew, like, you're an entertainer and you're trying to, like, get some really yeah. good conversation going and make their time more fun and make them laugh. And it was definitely a difficult task with them. What was the party that you threw for them? Great Gatsby? We did the Great Gatsby and the Moulin Rouge, which was, like, weird because oh, they were, like, pretty yeah. much the same thing. Yeah, Like, the way you so decorate true. them were, like, cool We literally guys. decorated them the same, except, like, one like, was, like, colors. blue and gold, and one was, like, red and black. Yeah. I think the most fun of that whole charter was just, like, decorating the table. Yeah. <laughs> oh, not for me. I f***ing hate decorations. I loved it. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, boring. Very boring. Hey, subscribe if you like the video, and if you want more, click here.